Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to our 34th weekly magazine where we'll be covering from 15th October to 22nd October 2017. Thank you for your response and I hope the NCRT videos are beneficial for you. And as I have already informed you, we have started uploading 6th and 7th and other NCRTs as well. So once all this is done and based on the complete feedback of the students, we will be giving it to other students as well. So if anyone is interested to purchase it or watch these videos, you can actually send the request to double nine seven two triple zero three one eight. The details about this is present in previous week magazine as well. So let's quickly begin with what are the important news that is there in this particular week. The essay of the week is with respect to disaster management in the 21st century, where we need to be aware about what are the technological changes that has come up. We also have to talk about how exactly we are actually looking at mitigation and other processes how community has become very important in disaster management. So whenever we talk about any essay, try to think from different perspectives, historically, what were the difficulties in disaster management and how exactly technological revolution has taken place till now. What is the impact of disaster management on society? For example, there will be huge displacement of people, environmental refugees, are also becoming increasingly important in the world today. The third most important aspect is with respect to geography, which are the different types of disasters. For example, you may give cyclones, floods, droughts, anything associated with that is also important for you. Then we need to consider politically what are the measures taken by the government and internationally, what are the principles that we have adopted? What are the declarations that we have adopted to ensure that world community will be in a position to face any sort of disasters collectively? Then the most important point is with respect to economic impact. And then in the syllabus itself, you have science and technology and disaster management how the meteorological department can actually work effectively to ensure that information is provided. And at last, we should be also knowing how exactly this will lead to environmental management as well. So whenever we take any essay, the suggestion is please go subject wise and think what are the points that you can collect for that particular topic. If you can get more topics, then the benefit is that definitely you would have enough content to present yourself better. But if you are not in a position to get more points, then remember just because you know some specific points, you cannot fill the pages. At the same time, you will be bluffing a lot specific to any particular Subject avoid it until and unless you have your optional is that particular subject else you can take that up This is the suggestion I have with respect to essays So after this let us take up the next major issue that is there with respect to geography that is Northeast monsoon may set in by October end This is most common thing which we see every year. But for our students who have just started their preparation, you should be aware about monsoons. You should be aware that there are two types of monsoons which usually come to India. One is with respect to southwest monsoons and the other one is northeast monsoons. So let us just look at what exactly these are. Whenever we talk about Earth, right? So you have equator and you have 30 degree north and 30 degree south. 
usually high pressure is seen at 30 degree north and 30 degree south low pressure is seen at equator winds usually blow from high pressure to low pressure and you should be aware that in the southern hemisphere it moves to the left and in the northern hemisphere it moves to the right so because of this can you see that air is converging in this region and this is called as ITCZ that is intertropical convergence zone now this intertropical convergence zone usually shifts northward whenever the sun's rays will fall vertically at 23 and half the meaning of this is low pressure is usually present here so when we have equator winds which are actually going from high pressure region will go to left in the southern hemisphere and after crossing the equator it would turn right can you see this so this is called as, as it is starting here, the place of origin is always important for us. We call this as South West Trade Winds, right? So it is starting from Southwest, we call South West Trade Winds. On the other hand, when we look at this, can you see here? It is starting here and it is moving in this direction. We call North east trade winds so whenever winds blow from southwest towards india we call it as southwest monsoons and whenever they blow from northeast we call northeast monsoons october is the time when this usually starts so this is what they are actually talking about you can see this picture here where the intertropical convergence zone is present over India and the winds are blowing in this direction. And can you see intertropical pressure zone when it is near equator or below equator, the winds are blowing like this. So this is our northeast trade winds and this is our southwest trade winds. Pollution is a problem not just in India but almost all the developed countries usually faces this. Whenever our natural resources are being exploited badly and if it is going to the extent of depleting the resources even including lakes, oceans is an indication of development that is the tragedy of human life. And we are seeing the same thing happening in Lake Baikal, which is one of the world's deepest lake. And if you look, this is world's largest fresh water lake in terms of volume and also deepest lake in the world. It contains 20% of world's total unfrozen fresh water reserve. You can also see that it is known as Galapagos of Russia. And it is about 100 gases or volcanoes were found near this Lake Baikal. The lake is also declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this is the beauty of this but still the biggest problem that we are facing is with respect to pollution affecting that as well. From UPSC point of view, we need to be clear that this is important for us when it comes to what we actually say prelims, especially geography based questions. There was a debate in the country with respect to cracker bans in New Delhi, especially during this particular time when there is huge pollution levels. Unfortunately, even after this, when we actually observed there was huge pollution where the air quality index really showed that the pollution level in Delhi on that particular day was so severe that the air quality index marked it as the severe air quality problem in Delhi. 
So we need to understand here that this is not only associated with crackers and others, but we should be also aware that it is associated with the pollution. And why Delhi is affected when we see Mumbai and other places, it is associated with what we call as continentality. That is, whenever you have winters and whenever you have continents, there is high possibility that there will be inverse of temperature. Whenever there is inversal of temperature, cold will be below and warm will be above. Mixing doesn't take place and whenever mixing doesn't take place, usually the particles will be present in the lower atmosphere affecting the pollution levels. And with respect to elections, we may see that non-resident Indians who have left India for different purposes will be soon able to vote in India through proxy where they can authorize people to come and vote. So if this will occur, then definitely the people who are outside can still participate in the elections. We have seen several times that NRIs usually come to India during elections and they come and participate in our democracy. But please remember one most important aspect whenever we talk about elections or whenever we are talking about NRIs. The meaning of this is please don't get confused with overseas citizenship of India and pers people of Indian origin which are clubbed. Whenever we talk about NRIs, non-resident Indians, these are migrants who are present in other countries and have not given up Indian citizenship. If you have given up Indian citizenship, you are not eligible to vote. So this is not for PIO or OCI, but it is only for NRIs. This has to be clear. So don't get confused with this particular statement. There is good news for all the UPSC aspirants. There may be a new public health cadre that may come up with respect to public health management. We all are aware that you have IAS, IPS and many other services, but you don't have anything related to health. Because of this, there is lack of specialists who are present in hospitals who do not take care of the basic necessities that are required. Tamil Nadu took the initiative to establish this public health cadre where specific people who are specialized in this area are being usually hired so that they take care of the functioning of the government hospitals. If we take the case of UP where there were lot of deaths and last time we saw with respect to Gorakhpur gas tragedy where the most important thing was oxygen cylinders whether it is present or not is also not known to the people. That is the extent to which the negligence is there. If we have to overcome all this, it is very, very important for us to ensure that we have a specialized cadre. And this is being recommended by different committees like Mudaliyar, Kartar Singh, and even the 12th five-year plan had talked about this. Odisha has also talked about the public health cadre and it is looking for vast improvements. So if this would become a reality, then definitely it may help in improving the healthcare services. Whenever there is a role of speaker, usually the speaker has to be non-biased. In few countries, if you usually see, the speaker has to resign from the political party and actually become a speaker because he has to be neutral. Unfortunately, in India, the speakers still hold the political party or still they belong to the political party which has elected them. And this has actually led to some sort of differences between different political parties whenever some political people come to the position of the speaker. Always the opposition tries to say that the speaker is acting in a biased manner. Whenever it comes to election, it is not that the speaker is elected without any biasness. So the speaker, whoever contests for speaker position, should not be from any political party or he has to give up his political party seat or membership and then he has to contest. So that there will be some sort of 
neutrality that can be expected second important thing is he will also have some political aspirations in future so usually we observe that whoever becomes a speaker will not take up any other position but still there will be few people who want to take this we have seen several circumstances where several ministers were earlier speakers as well and when we talk about anti defection law speaker has the ultimate power and because of this every political party has become conscious to ensure that a person who is trustworthy will sit in this position so that if there is any sort of these mlas moving from one party to another party whenever it takes place the speaker will take strict action or he may postpone the action until and unless it is beneficial for the ruling party all this has made that speaker who has to be neutral is being misused in this we are trying to say how exactly the neutrality has to be maintained by the speaker to showcase to the world about indo russian relationship militarily india and russia are conducting joint military exercises popularly known as indra right and in this for the first time we are going for exercises in army navy and air force all together so what happens usually in these exercises usually each country tries to show whatever technology it has and how exactly it does any function whenever it comes to any particular force that is army how do they coordinate how do they function in a particular terrain air force how do they fight navy what are the benefits how do they communicate all this is important this is important for india given last year pakistan and russia had actually conducted a joint military exercise many people said that this is a beginning of russia china pakistan cooperation but india with this is trying to show to the world that indo russian relationship stand still and we can say that it is growing stronger year by year food processing is the most important sector which has to be focused in the country today prime minister has actually promised that he would ensure that the farmers income will double but if it has to take place then the most important area where investment is required is food processing the reason for that is it is believed that almost around 50000 crores worth food grains is getting rotten in india so it is very very important for us to ensure that these food grains are processed properly and if we can ensure that this money goes back to farmers or the farming community through self help groups and others are actively involved in food processing then this would actually benefit in increasing the income of these farmers and for this the government has ensured that there is easy entry of foreign direct investment without permission so that that would benefit the farmers without restrictions whenever it comes the processes will be quick so this is what we need to understand you have backward linkages in farming you have forward linkages in farming so we need to ensure that investments doesn't take place only in the backward linkages there is enough opportunities or scope to improve in the forward linkages as well if this takes place like sugarcane farmers who get good money even the others can be benefited india has established something called as national investment and infrastructure fund This is set up to ensure that commercially viable greenfield brownfield and stalled projects in the infrastructure sector will receive money and NIF will invest in areas such as energy transportation housing water waste management and it is expected that the corpus will have around 40000 crores for this india was looking for some investors who will also invest for certain shares in this and abu dhabi based investment group is willing to invest in nif 
So in there may be prelims based question with respect to NIIF. So please read this carefully. Artificial intelligence is considered to be next most important area where every country is focusing on this and India has also thought of setting up expert group for artificial intelligence policy. It is believed that it may actually lead to lot of cyber attacks but also it may replace human beings in work. So there was a need for policy where several countries are having their own policies and on the basis of that India also have to adopt. But there is a seven point strategy that we need to consider here. That is the strategy includes developing methods for human machine interactions, ensuring safety and security of artificial intelligence system, creating competent workforce in line with artificial intelligence and R&D needs, understanding and addressing the ethical, legal and societal implications of this, measuring and evaluating artificial intelligence technology through standards and benchmarks. What is the meaning of this? Whenever we talk about any policy or anything comes newly, we need to know that how exactly this is going to benefit the humankind. And we are also aware that any new technology may have its own positives and negatives. We need to know whether this will be used for ethical purposes and what is the impact of this on the society. And we also need to know what are the standards and measures that needs to be set up so that law can take its own course whenever it is misused. You should have competent workforce which will be able to identify if something goes wrong with respect to this. These are some of the points that we need to look whenever we are talking about the artificial intelligence policy. At last, we need to see a flood of questions whenever we are talking about the several problems associated with interlinking of rivers. Whenever we talk about interlinking of rivers, it is a debate going on from the time Vajpayee was Prime Minister. The biggest issue is the states has to accept interlinking of water and they agree whenever floods take place but they don't agree whenever there is droughts. Usually in India which is dependent on monsoons, droughts or less water is seen at least six months as this is deciduous type of climate. We usually observe that there is dry region in most parts of the country. This would actually lead to reduction in water level. So only states don't want to consider that whenever the water level is more so that it can be benefited effectively. So usually states try to think about the lean periods as well and if once an agreement is done, they have to stick to that. Because of all these issues, environmental issues, and when we talk about forest, it may be submerged because of this. All this have actually led to flood of questions about is interlinking of water or rivers really possible, right? And then please try to see the most important point that is, what is the ethical dimension of going digital in our economy? Please try to answer them. Some of the answers have improved. I hope the feedback is helping you people. So whoever is not writing, you can write and submit to us. Again, as I have told you, whether you need the soft copy or anything, please log on to loix.in slash test prep. Right? Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.